Okay, so you want to restore a truck. Let's, uh, let's go where nobody wants to go, okay, with this. This is professional restoration, and this is how I go about it personally. And I know a lot of other shops do, and I know there's still a mess here. We're actually working on that today while we're getting this. And I'm going to get to a point, okay? Why I don't like some of this work, okay, and especially when you work at a shop, and you start it on something and somebody runs out of money, somebody's always getting mad at somebody, and a lot of times it's over nothing, okay? But a truck like this is world class, okay? It's got a few flaws, it's got the wrong bumper on it, okay? There's a 454, and it runs super strong. I'm gonna have the heads gone over. Uh, somebody Mickey Mouse the heads back in the day. Now, I have this truck about five years. It was a customer's who abandoned it here. Um, basically signed off on it. Our neighbors are active today. I'm glad to see them cleaning up their junk too. It's been a bad summer. Nobody got anything done. So this is the condition of a truck. That's another piece of crap, but it's a fifth wheel truck and it's too good to throw away. It's got a good strong transmission, but well, just like I moved it today, okay, and the reason why I'm making this video, the brakes are locked up. Uh, I think the rears actually. So let me put you on the tripod and explain. It starts with that clipboard. Okay. That's how guys like me start a restoration. Right here. Now, she already has a file. The reason this is going on, and even now, is it's a tepid winter. And it gets my mindset because what happens to this stuff is why my first words of the video why I don't like this work because I have a bunch of parts for this goddamn truck and they're all over they're like Tula Rosa I got the hood down at my dad's place I got the tailgate uh, in my uh, shop uh, I got two doors in either parts of my barns uh, I have new motor uh, window regulators I have so many parts for this truck I'm just describing but a few and it needs an interior the interior is atrocious okay it's just a simple fact of age and what age does to these trucks and that uh, roof liner that I'm pricing is probably almost $500 so that's not going to happen anytime soon but it will get stripped and removed out of the truck along with some other things and we need to repair those actuators underneath the dashboard I got one of them that sounds like uh, when you go it's doing that underneath the dashboard okay so when you start a professional restoration, it starts with a list of needs. Now, a lot of her needs have already been answered as far as what she needs, but getting them on the truck is another story. And this is where if you work for a shop like me, I am in the market, I, I do need a job. I, but I want a part-time obligation, and I don't want to work for some ball buster where you got to be right there at 7. Uh, today's traffic is not yesterday's traffic, and there's too many kamikazes on the road. It's my driver's license and driving almost nearly 50 years on the on these Pennsylvania roads, okay, without a major accident, without a major citation, uh, that's a miracle, okay? But I drove stock cars, so I've driven out of accidents just like that big one out on 81. Um, I think, I, I don't know if I shared that uh, story that morning I left. Um, I was running around town now. I think that was like, it was only about 1, 1 in the afternoon and the snow squall out of hell came down and these tractor trailers are blowing by me. Oh, I, that's one of the reasons why I like the modern-day Silverado and some of the modern-day trucks and cars because, boom, I hit that four-wheel drive. I already knew when I went into that snow squall, shit was going to happen. I slowed down, and everybody's passing me. And what I saw was the big fireball. That was when, I guess, that propane truck went up or part of it. So when I do a restoration... I do a restoration, and I don't care if it's for me or you, but you're not going to bust my balls when I'm going to be to work. I get to work, and I put my time in. So I, a lot of times I've stayed over, or you just dock the guy. You know, what are you going to do? You're not going to make a guy lose his driver's license, because like I said, working for one of them insane uh, bosses or whatever, those days are over with me, okay? I managed to get things done here, so if I worked for you, I would manage to get things done for you. Okay, it's just that when you have a dictator type of boss, that's the guy you don't want to work for. Okay, now I I was accused of that I worked for uh, construction. The reason why I got out of it was everybody that's doing it now. 
everybody here that even doesn't speak english now they're a contractor and uh, well it's sort of happening like that with automobiles but when you when you're a restoration expert okay it starts with an estimate you want that guy to do an estimate okay but the problem with that is one thing's connected to this thing that thing's connected to the other thing and that thing's connected to something else so when you go taking stuff apart when it's restoration, it was like Dan with the Dodge Charger says, well, I want to take it to a body shop. Well, there's really one one or two restoration shops really left. One of them is Bill's Service. Now, I only heard of the guy. I've never, I have not had any interaction with Bill's Service. Okay, so I can't tell you the truth about the guy, what he's like. When I did talk to him on the phone, he didn't sound all that friendly. So I'm really not that interested. I, I mean, if you need somebody to work for you, first of all, you have to have human tact. Uh, and sometimes I've been accused of being without that. It depends on who you are, I guess. Okay, and, and sometimes the boss has an appreciation for a real hard worker that puts in a, long, a lot of long days and stuff. But unfortunately, I have obligations like grass to cut, and I have my own trucks I want to restore. Okay, now she's coming underneath the hood. I gotta clean it up. But what I started with first is what I emphasize most is, I had the transmission gone over and had seals put in that. Okay, the, th uh, the motor was all gone over and I put uh, a set of what I was told were rebuilt heads and I'm assuming I've got a bad valve spring because I've got a tap, tap, tap and it's not the lifters, it, it has a brand new camshaft, it has brand new lifters in it so it's none of that, uh, it's not a valve, uh, the valves I looked at, the valve seats, the, 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 like I said, it, it's a spring, that's how I know things. Um, other times I've been fooled. Sometimes it's a worn rocker arm that'll make them tap. And you really don't notice it until you pull it up, get the ball pivot out of there. And it's either, it's usually worn in the ball pivot. And it's usually walking around that you can't really, that valve stays kind of loosey-goosey and that's why it taps because you can't tighten that valve pivot. Because I keep small block Chevy rocker arms. I covet them, them, them damn things because they work on some of the Fords. They work on some Chryslers and they're a lot better uh, and they're a lot cheaper if you go to the store whereas you're going to pay like four or five bucks for one and if you go buy a Ford rocker arm maybe they want 19 or 20 some of this stuff gets insane but it starts with this it starts with your pen this is this is your other tool you need three tools for restoration this one up here this is your largest tool and it's the biggest tool that people don't use i, I told you what's the what's the largest muscle in your body the largest muscle is right here. It's not uh, not here. You need to learn to use this muscle, and you need to learn <clears throat> to have a super perception. Because my MO, as I said, is to seal the engine up, seal the transmission up, then get brakes on it, then I look at the suspension. Because I told you, you don't want your truck to look like a dollhouse or be working on a suspension the same time you're doing the interior. Those are idiot things, and, and it's been done. I've had guys that have that, that uh, ruined basically a perfect job. or. A guy brought a fender here from a Mustang uh, about two summers ago to spray it. And I really didn't do a video on it because it's just a goddamn fender. Evidently, he was dialing up another car and had armor all on his pitties. I had wiped that fender down, okay? I, I have a pre-wash that I do, and a lot of times I'll wipe it down with reducer. He said, it's all primered, I just want you to paint it. So I get the core to paint out and I get it all mixed after I wipe it down. And guess what? After I, after I shot the outside of it, I should have stopped when I shot the inside first. But it dried in like an hour, and I saw like two fingerprints. Well, nobody really gives a shit because you got all them plastic covers and everything else under them Mustangs. But when I shot the outside of the fender, and I did, I wiped it down twice because of it. I'm not going to reprimer the guy's fender because he didn't give me any primer. So I shot it with the base coat, and the base coat rolled up in two different places. Those are the things why you want to have your suspension done and you don't want to be touching other cars, you don't want to be doing anything else. And that's why if I ran a restoration shop, your job is going to stay focused on what you are for per pretty much most of the day in your field and realm. So if you're the grease monkey taking greasy things apart in the grease shop, that's where you stay. If you're a body tech handling body parts and, and plastics and things, you're going to stay in the body area. Pretty much. 
guys like me, we sometimes we get an early day because we get finished and we got to get that stuff off of our fingers because you cannot always wear those rubber gloves, the protective gloves. I know a lot of guys do, but then they suffer uh, from extreme carpal tunnel, hand fatigue, uh, arthritis. I suffer from arthritis, so I can't be in a pair of those gloves all goddamn day long. I'll take them off. Sometimes I'll bite the bullet. When I'm working with solvents and some of their highly cancerous stuff, okay, I will wear the gloves and stuff like that. Bondo doesn't bother me sticking to my pitties and all that, but if I touch something, I make sure I get that off of there, I scrub. And a lot of shops like I've worked at don't even have a proper freaking scrub room. Uh, the septic's all backed up, nobody takes care of anything. They just stick that money in their pocket, they don't reinvest it in the business because, oh, I'm selling it in a couple of years. This is going to get blown out, first of all, because there's dirt all over it, and it's going to get semi-cleaned up. And that's one of the things is, if you have a project truck, I don't care how long it sits, don't let it sit and grow moss and mold all over it. And, and, and part, of, part of that was, I just didn't have time, but I restored the towing mirrors. The towing mirrors are going to stay on it, because she's going to eventually be my summertime tow rig. Um, but there's things like tires to buy, there's wheels, there are the finishing products. I really don't want that stuff on this truck. If the two front rims to this wouldn't have been destroyed, these mags that are on it wouldn't even be on it. But uh, whoever had this truck before was determined to kill it. And you could see by the dents that somebody just totally abused this beautiful piece of history. So maybe I can get lucky without spending four or $500. I do a lot of my fishing out in uh, Harrods. Another thing a restoration guy will do, another pro restoration tip. I have not really taken one of those roof liners out of this truck. So whatever I bust up, I'm going to bust up here and I'm going to learn a little bit about taking out the roof liner before I just go take out a roof liner because I've never taken out one. I don't know if the sun gun's up there glued in. I really don't know what I'm going to look. And that'll also tell you some, some parts you just have to get them new because they don't, they're not made to come apart. You're not going to get a used part out of the salvage yard, okay? So there are other parts like that. Now, I'm hoping I'm helping you guys because I did have a couple of people approach me. Oh, you do restoration work. Well, what's it going to cost to do this? Remember what I told you about one thing's connected to this thing, that thing, and the other thing, and then something else? That is another thing, as I said, when I, when I talk to people, I don't really know because it happens to me. I'll take something apart thinking it's a simple job on a weekend and it turns into a goddamn nightmare like that. And so if you're gonna take something to somebody for restoration, uh, pretty much you have to have a job and uh, you have to really contribute to the guy because otherwise he's gonna stick it out behind his shop and he's gonna say, next, and you're gonna be picking up your truck. And it was kind of like what happened to this. The guy had a fistful of dollars. Now, I don't know if it was inheritance or whatever, but evidently he squandered it, okay? So I'm going to get to the point is my kid said, okay, that's why Holly Ann's not back because my kid's going to share the bill with me because it's his truck, my truck, and we're going to go out and we're going to pay for it together. And unfortunately, uh, I got to write the guy a, uh, a check. I hate doing that, but I'm not running around and things, I'm not really feeling too swift. I'm, I'm actually doing this so I feel better because I want to get this machine apart here. I have a, uh, I'll show you that, I'll take you out the tripod. Jeff, my buddy, is supposed to bring a motor uh, for that thing. Uh, he has a, he has one of the larger, uh, the, I think they're the 301 cc. I always say 313, but I think that I think those have that one inch or three quarter inch uh, crankshaft or seven. I forget what it is. I have to look it up. But that's why you keep a file on stuff like this. Okay. I have a lot of parts. I even have running boards for it. I have full length running boards. I have other types of running boards. Um, this thing really is going to get some attention with some uh, undercoatings and I'm going to get this bed off of here so I can get at the spring hangers and the spring hangers on this truck are pretty much shot and the shackles. The frame doesn't have any holes in it yet, yet, but it's going to get sanitized the best I can sanitize it before it does end up with some uh, definite problems and that's why it's over here. It's basically going to sit over here on the, on the stonework and I'm at some point, I'm going to get the socket out to get those wheels off, and we are going to have a, a blast there putting the uh, brakes together. I got a set of uh, used calipers, and I have no idea how long I've had them, what they're off of, but they fit. So we're going to put the used calipers on it, and 
I'm thinking it's a back wheel. It seems like one of the drum brakes is hung up, but it could be the fronts. I'm just not particularly certain, but that is Restoration Work 101, and I just had to put a battery in it, and one of my buddies decided to put a cigarette butt out, which is something I will never do, but somebody was inside this truck. There's a few things missing out of it, and I really don't, uh, I really didn't have anything other than some of the junk parts and moldings and stuff in here, but you don't go violate somebody and, and go in, in their truck part shopping, but that's what happens when you let something sit, all right? So I've got other work to do, and as I told you, this is how beautiful things turn out. I do have valve covers for it. I have uh, some uh, chrome goodies and a chrome air cleaner for it. You know, but that, this is not the weather. And when they sit outside, some of that stuff goes to hell. I'm hoping to get this thing down uh, where it belongs, down by my dad's place. And then we'll get it inside that it can just sleep. All right, that is my video on restoration work. Okay. So I have batteries to charge my other truck. We're going to get the engine together. As I said, it's a winter right now when I'm not working. I'm not going to fret over not working. Eventually, somebody will call. And if you guys want to promote my channel, if you want to be on my channel with your parts network, uh, I have a need for those. You know what those are. The arch panels, the wheel arch. And on both sides, I want to do uh, the back cab panel there. The under panel's got a hole in it. Okay, the body, like, I've seen worse bodies than this, okay? This is fixable. Um, can I say it's ever going to be perfect? No, no. And I, I don't expect something this age, okay? If you're going to sell it as a show truck, you represent it as a show truck for fifty dollars or $100,000. If I sold it after it's all done, I'm going to sell it for what I have into it and my labor. And that's basically, like I said, uh, there goes Orange Cat Bad. That is our newest member. He was laying just about where this back bumper is. I thought he was dead. As you can hear, okay, this highway out here is very dangerous. He got spit out of a tri-axle dump truck. And he flew about five feet from my mailbox, so I never did get my mail that day. I laid him back there, and I thought he was dead. I was going to bury him later in the day. And when I went to bury the little son of a gun, he was gone. The next day, he was dragging his butt. And I fixed him up, took him to the vet, and I just got him fixed. And then his brother that I found wandering around out here, who's a little on the mentally ill side. Uh, nobody needs girlfriends. I don't need girlfriends. I got mentally ill cats. But his brother's a little on the psychotic side. So this is my mess that I must clean up today. That's on my bucket list for today. And I've got batteries to charge.